Chapter 10. Was Peter the First Pope? Standing at the head of the Roman Catholic Church is the Pope of Rome. This man, according to Catholic doctrine, is the earthly head of the Church and successor of the Apostle Peter. According to this belief, Christ appointed Peter as the first Pope, who in turn went to Rome and served in this capacity for 25 years. Beginning with Peter, the Catholic Church claims a succession of Popes, which has continued to this day. This is a very important part of the Roman Catholic doctrine, but do the scriptures teach that Christ ordained one man to be above all others in his church? Can we find any scriptural authority for the office of a pope, a supreme pontiff, that the early Christians recognized Peter as such? To the contrary, the scriptures clearly show that there was to be an equality among the members of the church and that Christ is the head of the church, Ephesians 5 and 23, not the pope. James and John once came to Yahashua, asking if one of them might sit on his right hand and the other on his left in the kingdom. In eastern kingdoms, the two principal ministers of state, ranking next in authority to the king, holding these positions. If the Roman Catholic claim is true, it seems that Yahashua would have explained that he had given the place of his right to Peter and did not intend to create any position on the left. But to the contrary, here was the answer of Yahashua. You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise dominion on them, but it shall not be so among you. Mark 10, 35-43 In this statement, Yahashua plainly said that none of them was to be a ruler over the others. Instead, he taught an equality, clearly denying the principles that are involved in having a Pope ruling over the church as the bishop of bishops. Yahashua further taught the concept of equality by warning the disciples against using flattering titles such as father. The word pope means father, rabbi, or master. For one is your master, even Christ. He said, and all you are brethren. Matthew 23, 4-10 The idea that one of them was to be exalted to the position of pope is at utter variance with this passage. But Roman Catholics are taught that Peter was given such a superior position that the entire church was built on him. The verse that is used to support this claim is Matthew 16 and 18. And I say to you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If we take this verse in its settings, however, we can see that the church was not built on Peter, but on Christ. In the verse just before, Yahashua asked the disciples who men were saying that he was, some said he was John the Baptist, some Elijah, others thought he was Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then Yahashua asked, But whom say you that I am? To this Peter replied, You are the Christ, the son of the living Elohim. Then it was that Yahashua said, You are Peter, Petros, a stone, a rock, and on this rock, Petra, a massive rock, the great foundation rock of truth that Peter had just expressed. I will build my church. The rock on which the true church was to be built was connected with Peter's statement. You art the Christ. And so the true foundation on which the church was built was Christ himself, not Peter. Peter himself declared that Christ was the foundation rock. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 8. He spoke of Christ as a stone, which was set at naught of you builders. Neither is there salvation in any other. Acts chapter 4, 11 and 12. The church was built on Christ. He is the true foundation and there is no other foundation. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Yahashua HaMashiach. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. When Yahashua spoke of building his church on a rock, the disciples did not take this to mean he was exalting Peter to be their pope. For two chapters later, they asked Yahashua a question about who is the greatest, Matthew 18 and 1. If Yahashua had taught that Peter was, was the one on whom the church was to be built, if this verse proved that Peter was to be the Pope, 
the disciples would have automatically known who was the greatest among them. Actually, it was not until the time of Calixtus who was. If you like the content so far, hit the like and subscribe button. Bishop of Rome from 218 to 223. That Matthew 6 and 18 was used in an attempt to prove that the church was built on Peter and that the Bishop of Rome was his successor. If we take a closer look at Peter in the scriptures, it becomes apparent that Peter was not a pope at all. 1. Peter was married. The fact that Peter was a married man does not harmonize with the Catholic position that a pope is to be unmarried. The scriptures tell us that Peter's wife's mother was healed of a fever, Matthew 8 and 14. Of course, there couldn't be a Peter's wife's mother if Peter didn't have a wife. Even years later, Paul made a statement which shows that the apostles had wives, including Cephas. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 5, Cephas was Peter's Aramaic name, John chapter 1 and verse 42. 2. Peter would not allow men to bow down to him. When Peter came into his house, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am a man. Acts 10, 25 and 26. This is quite different from what the Pope might have said. For men do bow before the Pope. Peter did not place a tradition on the level with the word of God. To the contrary, Peter had little faith in traditions from your fathers. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. His sermon on the day of Pentecost was filled with the word, not traditions of men. When people asked, what should they do to get right with God? Peter did not tell them to have a little water poured or sprinkled on them. Instead, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Yahashua HaMashiach, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. Acts 2 and 38. 4. Peter was not a pope. For he wore no crown. Peter himself explained that when the chief shepherd shall appear, then shall we receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. First Peter 5 and 4. Since Christ has not yet appeared again, the crown that the Pope wears is not one bestowed on him by Mashiach. In short, Peter never acted like a Pope, never dressed like a Pope, never spoke like a Pope, never wrote like a Pope, and people did not approach him as a Pope. In all probability, in the very early days of the church, Peter did take the most prominent position among the apostles. It was Peter who preached the first sermon after the outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh at Pentecost, and 3,000 were added to Yahweh Elohim. Later, it was Peter who first took the gospel to the Gentiles. Whenever we find a list of the 12 apostles in the Bible, Peter's name is always mentioned first, Matthew 10 and 2, Mark 3 and 16. Luke 6 and 14, and Acts 1 and 13. But none of this, not by any stretch of the imagination, would indicate that Peter was the Pope or universal bishop of bishops. While Peter apparently did take the most outstanding role of the apostles at the very beginning, later, Paul seems to have made the most outstanding ministry. As a writer of the New Testament, for example, Paul wrote 100 chapters with 2,325 verses while Peter only wrote eight chapters with 166 verses. Paul spoke of Peter, James, and John as pillars in the Christian church, Galatians 2 and 9. Nevertheless, he could say, In nothing I am behind the very chiefest apostle, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. But if Peter had been the supreme pontiff, the pope, then certainly Paul would have been somewhat behind him. In Galatians 2 and 11, we read that Paul gave a rebuke to Peter, because he was not to be blamed, wording which seemed strange if Peter was regarded as an infallible pope. Paul was called the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 and 13, whereas Peter's ministry was primary to the Jews, Galatians chapter 2 verses 7 through 9. This fact in itself would seem significant to show Peter was not the bishop of Rome, for Rome was a Gentile city, Acts 18 and 2. All of this is indeed highly significant when we consider that the entire framework of Roman Catholicism is based on the claim that Peter was Rome's first bishop. There is no proof, biblically speaking, that Peter ever went near Rome. The New Testament tells us he went to Antioch, Samaria, Joppe, Caesarea, and other places, but not Rome. This is a strange omission, 
especially when Rome is considered the most important city in the world. The Catholic Encyclopedia article Peter points out that a tradition appeared as early as the 3rd century for the belief that Peter was the Bishop of Rome for 25 years. These years being, as Jerome believed, from 42 AD until 67 AD. But this viewpoint is not without distinct problems. About the year 44, Peter was in the Council of Jerusalem, Acts 15. About 53, Paul joined him in Antioch, Galatians 2 and 11. About 58, Paul wrote his letters to the Christians at Rome in which he sent greetings to 27 persons, but never mentioned Peter. Imagine a ministry writing to a church, greeting 27 of the members by name, but never mentioning the pastor. The accompanying photograph shows a statue, supposedly of Peter, that is located in St. Peter's at Rome. I have witnessed long lines of people waiting to pass before it and kiss its foot. So that concludes chapter 10, Was Peter the First Pope of Babylon Mystery Religion? Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, Yah willing, and Shalom. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahshua, Hamashiach, our High Priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Lift off and the clock has started.